Hi friends, it's Monica and let's talk about what I read in June. So I had another great reading month and I did manage to read six books this month and I'm really excited about that. Within the span of one week, and this is quite unusual for me, I did manage to read four books. So I don't know what happened but I think I was just on a roll with reading really good books. Alright, let's get to the first book and I first read Jade City Bay Fonda Lee and I rated this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This isn't a book that I would usually go for because it is an urban fantasy but with Jade City you do not want to miss out on this one. Jade City is about two crime syndicate families have control over the island of Gakon. We follow the Call family who have green bones among their rings. And these green bones are special warriors that wear jade and jade grants them superhuman abilities. But the calls and the rivals are at odds with each other and tensions are rising and there might be an impending war on this island. Going back to how this is a urban fantasy genre and how there was a blend of technology, guns, and cars that worked really well with the supernatural element which is the jade. It wasn't over jarring and the island itself also has Asian influences on its own culture and customs which made it really a great atmosphere and setting for us readers. The best part for me were the growing tensions between the Mountain Clan and the No Peak Clan. So the No Peak Clan is the Call family that are our main characters. There are a lot of small skirmishes and small betrayals between the two clans and they were really well done and executed and to build up that growing tension into what becomes a clan war. You as a reader, you don't know who to trust and you don't know which character will betray our main characters. It reminded me of what I really loved about Beaky Blinders, the TV show, and the enemy is someone that you would label as anyone going against the family or the gang itself. As I said before, in this book we're following the Call family. So we have multiple POVs in this book following from the perspective of Lan, Hilo, Shay, and their cousin Andon, and we also have other POVs as well. But looking at the main POVs, each one has their own distinctive voice and it was really well written and fleshed out all the perspectives as well as the characters. There are complex family dynamics and sibling jealousies and rivalries that were really fun to read about. The other thing I really enjoyed was like the balance within the clan itself and how there are three main roles in the clan. One being the leader, then there's a business head, and then there's a crime leader. And with all three roles, it's really important to see how they all play a part within the clan and how that influences the gang politics as well as their strategy to approach something like a clan war, whether that be from a business standpoint, with diplomacy, or with the crime standpoint, with the violence. The writing itself was very descriptive, but it really did add to the immersion into the world. One of my favorite characters was Hilo. He's one that has to fit into many different roles, and it's really interesting to see how with someone of his character of being really hard-headed and hot-headed and really quick to take action was taking on all those roles and responsibilities. One of the other characters I really loved was Shay and she is the only daughter and the youngest call in the family. She was one to defy the traditional ways of being in a Greenbone clan and I really liked how that brought about different conflicts within the family and also in the wider gang politics. I really enjoyed this one and I will be continuing the series. So my next read was a YA mystery and I rated this one a 4 out of 5 stars and it is The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Going into this book, I didn't really know what to expect and it is sort of like a rags to riches story with a Cinderella twist. We first meet Avery, a protagonist who is in her junior year I believe and all she wants is just to graduate and get a scholarship for college. But her entire world changes overnight when a unknown billionaire, Tobias Hawthorne, leaves Avery his entire fortune and Avery doesn't know who this guy is but her entire life has just changed from that point on. But in order to get the inheritance, she has to move into the billionaire's home known as the Hawthorne House. And in this house, there are four Hawthorne grandsons and that does create problems of its own. But the Hawthorne House is also unique because it has puzzles and riddles and it's full of 
gains. So my ultimate verdict at the end of book one was that I am on team Grayson. I just really liked him better than Jameson based off on whatever they gave us from the interactions that they had with Avery. And the book itself was very fast paced, there's really short chapters, and the concept itself really kept you glued to the page. I did read some part of this book on audiobook from the library and it does remind you that these Hawthorne boys are from Texas so they all have southern accents and it was really entertaining to hear the accents because sometimes I don't remember when characters have accents or not so it was really nice to hear that. I actually really enjoyed the mystery of the Hawthorne boys themselves and why Grayson and Jameson are rivals. Avery herself is a strong character because she took the news in stride that she just became a teenage billionaire overnight but she does have problems that come up and she goes with the flow with it. She definitely gives people the benefit of the doubt and she cares deeply for those she loves. Avery also has a really quick mind to solve riddles and puzzles so she's quite intelligent in that aspect. But the big shocking twist at the end of the book was somewhat predictable but it was really entertaining and bless. I would definitely recommend this book if you are in a reading slump since it was a really fun concept of a teenage girl being thrown into the world of sad rich boys and she magically becomes an heiress to billions so if you want something like that I think you should pick this up. I actually did read the sequel to The Inheritance Games which is the Hawthorne Legacy and I rated this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Continuing from when book 1 ended, book 2 really just took off in the same aspect. It was very it was a very similar fast page read for me and it's still really entertaining. We're still hunting clues of why Avery has this connection to the Hawthorns and we also explore some of the Hawthorne boy's parentage as well as Avery's parentage. There was more of a focus on the growth relationships and I thought less so on the mystery itself but I wasn't really complaining about that because the relationship developments were really fun to read about. What made me dislike this installment was that Avery was naive at times but I do acknowledge that this book is YA and Avery herself is a 17 year old teenager so at times I also did find the writing a bit juvenile but again it's it's a YA book. One of the things in particular that did catch my attention was that the author would describe something in three. So for example, she would describe like love as epic, incomplete without the other, once in a lifetime love. It was just too much for me, like maybe describe it in another way. Although in the second book, Avery is more exposed to the dangers of being a rich heiress and how people are coming after her. That leads Avery to learn about who and who not to trust in her life. Also regarding the romances, at first you would think it would be a love triangle but it's obviously it's not a love triangle and for me it's really easy to see who Avery will end up with but with the back and forth it's still really fun to read how Avery interacts with the boys. So ultimately I did have fun with book two but I do want to see in the finale more puzzles and riddles that we got in book one so I'm really looking forward to reading the last book which is releasing in August. My next book is a rom-com and I read The Bodyguard by Catherine Center and I read this one a four out of five stars. Let me start by saying that this book really did remind me of a rom-com movie and I think it would make a great adaptation for a rom-com movie. There were so many moments that I actually laughed out loud. There may have been a lot of over-the-top scenes but it fit perfectly into the rom-com genre and it was a really light-hearted read. So we follow Hannah Brooks who is a bodyguard and I did really love the change of how the bodyguard is typically a man and now it's a woman in this book. So Hannah is assigned to protect whoever her agency points her to protect but this time it's a little bit different since now her new assignment is to protect high-profile Hollywood actor Jack Stapleton. This book is set at Jack's family ranch in Texas and Jack's mother is sick and he doesn't want his family to know that he actually has a stalker. Hannah then poses as his fake girlfriend to keep up the ruse of her not being a bodyguard. There were really fun romance tropes in this one. We have fake dating for its proximity and we have the one bed trope as well and all in all, it was a really swoony romance. There was good chemistry between our main couple alongside with serious family dynamics. I think this book would be perfect for a vacation trip or a road trip and 
I am really looking forward to reading more books from Catherine Center. And my next book is a fantasy romance and it was A Deal with the Elf King by Elise Kova and I rated this one a 4 out of 5 stars. I would say this one is a blend of older YA and adult themes but the writing itself would be more YA. I actually did struggle if I wanted to give this book 3 or 4 stars but I actually really did enjoy how the author went in depth with the character's internal struggles and so that bumped up my rating. This book is about a 19 year old girl named Luella and she is set to marry the cold and elusive elf king in order to maintain peace between the worlds of humans and elves. There is something called the Fade which is a magical wall barrier that divides the human world from the elf magical world. The elf lore itself was really quite nice to read about, to learn about the origins of magic in this world. There are certain rules and limitations that the characters have to follow and I really do like how when there's magic systems that actually have like set rules and it makes it more challenging for the characters. Now Luella is the human queen and she has no idea how to control her new magical found powers. Because Luella didn't even know she had powers, this leads to some interesting conflicts between her and the elf king Eldest. Also Luella struggles to transition to being the queen of the elvish world which is known as Midscape since it's a completely foreign place to her and she did not have any preparation at all for this role. With the internal struggles, both Luella and Eldest, they have a similar theme of internal struggles. They follow the same thing of struggling to choose between the duty they believe they have to fulfill versus what they truly desire. The romance in this book was really really good and well executed but it was quick and the beginning of their marriage was forced but that was addressed later on in the book. They both share the burden of having to protect their worlds and take care of them. However, there was like a 180 degree switch in Luella from her being super defined against Eldis and her role. I do believe she learns to connect with Eldis from their sense of responsibility and she learns to care for him and he also does the same for her. There was a lack of action that made some of parts of the book drag on and also some dialogue bits were stiff but I overlooked that. Overall I was really immersed into this world and the relationship since it is a fantasy romance. Some things could have been improved but overall it was a really fun read. My last read of June was a disappointing one and it was Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins and I rated it a 2 out of 5 stars. I really did want to enjoy this book but with this one it fell short of it being a thriller and it didn't really live up to my standards of what I want out of a good thriller. So the basic premise of this book is we're following six people who are sailing to a island. And this island, Moreau Island, is known as a paradise but it also has a strange history of murder, cannibalism, and shipwrecks. So we have six people that we are following that are on this island but then a mysterious lone stranger also pops up on the island and the group dynamics of the six original people begin to change. One person goes missing, another is found dead, and the island is really far from civilization and this group don't know if they can get any help at all. To be honest, I was quite bored reading this book. I wanted more thriller aspects and learning more of the story behind this mysterious island. But what we got was more of a soapy drama and delving really deep into the dramatic lives of our six characters. I felt that there was no suspense or creepiness and really no overall point of a mystery in this book. And looking up on Goodreads, I actually realized I have read a book series from this author before being the YA fantasy Hex Hall series. And I remember really enjoying that. But I think her adult thrillers do need a little bit more work and maybe upping up like the action factor or the creepiness factor to make her thrillers more enjoyable for me as a reader. I still do want to read her other thriller which is The Wife Upstairs and I hope I do like that one more than Reckless Girls. But I do think if you are looking for a thriller read, you could skip out on this one and you wouldn't miss out on anything. So those were all the books I read in June. As always, I'm hoping that I continue to read as many books that I can 
And I also did recently upload what I'm reading in July and August, and I'll link that for you up above and in the description box below. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you all had a good day. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and ring that notification bell to not miss any future uploads. I'll see you all soon.